For the past eight days, we've been working hard, focusing all of our energy on preparing Delos to cross the Pacific Ocean. And with a boat project list that just wouldn't quit, we were still hard at it. We have not taken any time off. We, we have just been going. <laughs> we have been going. We'd sanded and patched the hole, installed a new forward-looking sonar transducer, painted a new boot stripe, serviced the bow thruster, serviced the propeller, cleaned the upholstery, and even drilled a very unnecessary hole in the bottom of Delos. With only a few days remaining before our planned trip home to see family, it was all hands on deck to get as much done as possible. Today's a big day of work. We've got some uh, painting to do and uh, I wanna get a lot of stuff knocked out. So I'm gonna get an early morning start and uh, go ahead and jump on the bike here. start so we can get two coats of paint on the pinch right figured I'd get out there early get to work on that there's the bootstrap master right here how's it going good good now we got the tape pulled off and right and now we're just doing oh the, it uh, looks good huh I remember the little we're gonna, we called it the Brady hump last time. The Brady right? divot? Brady made the dip. We think we've un-Brady dipped it. So. Oh, it looks good. And look at this little princess. Hey, Sierra. Welcome to the boat yard. Are you ready to get to work? All right, what we get into here? We got a guest star helper today. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna try to bleed here a little for you. Ready? You. Yes. Let's see how, how good it's on there. Oh, nice. For the first time I did this, I forgot to do this set screw right here with Loctite. And I was motoring all the way from Seattle to San Francisco. And uh, it went to pull out. into the dock, put it in reverse, prop came off. The only thing holding it on the whole trip was the fact that we were in gear the whole way. Nice. Just like that. Hopefully it won't be milky white. No, it looks good. Looks good. It's not really that worn at all. You can feel like a little bit of a groove there, but it's still got some life left on it. But this is kind of a disposable part. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out yesterday. We got uh, all the oil out and I'm just gonna clean this up. And then we gotta get these seals out. I have a dent puller to use for that. Clean it up and then we'll uh, put it back together. Fill it with oil. Should be good as new. Bingo. So I've got the old piece here, the old bushing, and uh, I've put the new seal on it. And now I'm just gonna put it on the old bushing and then I use that to push the new seal back. There we go, like a glove. Sometimes boat projects gotta take a back seat. All work and no play makes Brian a dull boy. So it was my duty to make sure that the dune buggy in our friend Tom's garage was up and running. So one of our jobs today is to take dive tank holder. It's a wooden piece. As you can see, it's in need of some love. Downstairs it goes to get its new lease on life. It's always a good sign when you got all this dust on your belly. That tells you you're doing something right, right? You can't fake that. Or something wrong. <laughs> no, you're doing a good job on it. We've got our new dinghy anchor here. 
we thought we'd be real cool and get it welded up because it's collapsible but I want it just to be together all the time but there was a little miscommunication with the the welder here because he put the bar like this so now it's just like <laughs> the so, bar is supposed to be on that side right so now <laughs> it's useless dang it <laughs> all right paint on the stripes are dry so let's take this tape off Good news is, is the paint came off great everywhere except for exactly where I started. All right, let's touch this up a little bit here. How's the dive tank holder coming, Demetrius? It's coming along pretty well. <laughs> Fresh precision sails, huh? Coming up. Yeah, so we've got a brand spanking new mainsail we're gonna put up. Shout out to the guys at Precision Sails. Thank you for that. Uh, they sent it over to us uh, a little while ago. And I figure before we cross the Pacific, it'll be really good to have a, a brand new main up there. We'll upcycle this one, turn it into something cool. Sweet. So here's the first batten pocket. Three is the shortest. No, one is the shortest, but three is a little bit longer, and then two is the longest. So how, do, so how does that work? So what are the discussions about these? <laughs> uh, we're just putting the battens in for this particular sail because it's a roller furling. Instead of having horizontal battens, like you would on a normal sail, this one has vertical battens. And they're all different lengths, and they're not numbered. Or are they? Not? Yeah, this is like a length though. Oh, it's a length. So I'm just holding it up to the batten pocket to see which one. Okay. And that's pretty close, right? Or is it too long? This is the next shortest one. <laughs> so there is Don't ask. <laughs> Don't ask. This is going to go to tomorrow, is my guess. Okay. They're all that exact one inch too long. Well, that one's about, well, that one's like about three, three inches four. too long. Huh. The verdict, in my opinion, is that the battens are approximately the same size as the pockets and they need to be trimmed to length. Maybe that's part of the construction. I'll ask Daryl. Well, it turns out that the battens weren't quite as precise as they could have been. But it wasn't anything the little hacksaw action couldn't fix. There it is. Sierra, do you know what we're gonna do now? We're gonna cut out our mainsail that we just took off the boat and we're gonna do something fun with these cutouts that we do. Oh! oh that's real smooth. Sm oh! <laughs> <laughs> Whoopsies! <laughs> <laughs> we're getting to the really important part here. We've got a really cool project coming soon with these upcycled sail pieces. If you'd like to be the first to know what we create and get first dibs when they're available in the shop, please check out patreon.com forward slash svdelos, where you can become part of the inner tribe, participate in our patrons only Q&A, message us directly, and much, much more.
today's list, we're going to replace the compressor and the cooling plate in this fridge. This is actually one of the original ones from Delos. So it is 22 years old. It's still working, but it has failed a couple times and I have had to fill it up with new gas a few times, which means that there is a very slight leak. And so I have this other compressor I've been carrying around for like two years. It's been sitting in there for 22 years and a circumnavigation. It's time to be free. And there's the board we need to use for putting on the new compressor so that it can mount back inside the hole perfectly. All right, got the old plate out. Here's the new plate. This guy's going away, and this one's getting installed. All right, let's see if we can make it fit. One, two, yeah, perfect. All right, there she is, she's in there now. I get the glory work. I get to come along and act like I'm finishing up the job here after Ryan did all the hard work. <laughs> Give her a test. Hit it up. Boom. All right, she's running. It is way cold. Woo! -hoo. Oh yeah. So satisfying. Cool. Nice work. High five. Boom. All right. You ready to go to the boat yard? No. No. We're about two weeks into work project mode. And honestly, starting to feel a little worn out. But it was a race to the finish before our upcoming trip, so there's no rest for the weary. Dang, it's looking good, guys. Rolling, baby. So today here on Delos, we're in a big, we're in for a treat because uh, we just found out today is it's actually upper body day. So we'll be doing our upper body workouts today. Uh, getting this hole buffed out and getting it waxed up. So here we go. So I swear Brian puts these time lapses on me to make sure that I'm actually working. Hey, there's zero winds. I might ask. We might get the jib down real quick if it's all right with you guys. Yeah. Yeah, there's no wind today. I, well, just a moment ago, the gust started coming up. Oh. We were starting to take it out again. I was like, here we go again. We had a little bit of a scary moment yesterday. Yeah. Zero wind, just as Demetrius had a handful of the sheet. Uh, this makes me nervous as hell. Yeah, I think it, gonna rethink that man it popped on him and uh, oh. he got a burn mark on his hand so today we try to do this early in the morning so we can get ahead of things why are you in a bosun chair just for shits and giggles. <laughs> now we're gonna change out these solar panels. These are 300 watt panels. And I've got some bigger 410 watt ones we're gonna put up there. Brian, what's the importance of today? What is today? Solar panel Saturday. We got one panel down last night. We just gotta get this guy down. All right, we're going with the uh, smarter, not harder theory. So we've got the halyard hooked up to a nice little bridle. And let's see if we can keep this panel from falling and breaking. So we're removing 
this too because it's what, like you said, it's like an inch or two short? It's three inches too short. <laughs> There's some old corrosion in your face for you. This is one of the new panels. So this is 410 watts. And so you can see, I thought that the 400 watt panel would be much, much bigger. But look, the 300 watt panels are actually that much longer. And the 400 watt panel is just barely a little bit wider. Uh, so, you know, the efficiency is getting better on these panels and you're getting a lot more. It's a pretty big improvement in five years. You know, I can't lie to you, sometimes boat work day isn't the best day and isn't the most fun. But I will say this, wearing one of these great Delos t-shirts makes it a little bit easier and a little bit more comfortable. So if you want one like this, head on over to svdelosshop.com. The new solar panels are 10 centimeters wider than the old ones, so you put three of them together, that's a total of 30 centimeters wider, and the old mount I had up there is not wide enough. Okay, now how's that? I like it. It's in the hole. Oh yeah. So I think when we hoist the solar panel up, it's gonna wanna come into the boat and back, right? Towards the mast. And so maybe we'll get this long line and we'll just tie it to the top of it and go kind of out and back. Up a little bit, let's see how it sits. Get it tied up. Okay. Down a little bit, Demetrius. Ever so slightly. Okay, hold it right there. It works so well. Okay, never mind. All right, ease Bill. Great. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about the flex panels we have on the deck. These are 100 watts, 100 watts, 100 watts, 100 watts. 170 and 170 and I'm actually pretty impressed with them. We've had them up here uh, about three years They put in about as much as our hard panels on the back did and you can put them any place uh, Or place that you couldn't put a, a normal heavier solid panel and I guess the major downfalls They are more expensive So the the flexible ones are more expensive on a per watt basis than the hard panels But I'm sure the price will come down those were provided by sunpoweredyachts.com uh, super cool, Lyle and Katie are sailors, they're a family run business, so we like to support them. The other thing I had to do, is I had to put in a new charge controller because the voltage on these panels is higher and eventually we're gonna have three of these up here because when we cross the Pacific, we're gonna have to take the Viasat dome down unfortunately because there's no Pacific coverage right now. But when we do that, uh, we'll put the third panel up here, which will give us a total of uh, 1,230 watts just on the arch alone, plus the 780 uh, in the flex panels on the front. So we should be doing pretty well. The reason I had to go with the different charge controllers because I'm gonna run these in series. And when I do that, the open circuit voltage is gonna be about 150 volts. And the old controller only handled up to uh, 100 volts. So let's go ahead and plug them in and see if we get smoke or fires. Should start to see these numbers creeping up. 70 watts, 100 watts. So the sun's pretty low right now and the panels are super dusty because we're in Rocky Point, but it should actually be called Dusty Point. So there's like a thick layer of dust over all the panels. So I'm gonna have to clean them off and um, then we should be cranking the power in. We have not taken any time off. We, we have just been going, we have been going. Pretty much this amount of light is what it's been every night as we walked out of this boat yard. Oh, good job, man. It's awesome been a great work. time. We'll see you guys on the next You're one. You're out of here at seven in the morning. Yeah, which drive means out. we're gonna say goodbye to you right now because <laughs> seven in the morning I'll be snoozing. I know that. <laughs> no, hey, it's been a great time. Um, I really appreciate you guys giving me a call again. And, um, you know. I'll tell you what, if you come back, 
I'm gonna triple your pay. Sweet. Do you know how much he pays me? <laughs> Nothing. That's what I ask for. Nothing. But no. Yeah, thank uh, you, Doug. Yeah. Thank you, Appreciate brother. it, bro. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Absolutely. We'll see you when we see you, huh? You guys make sure y'all subscribe or else I'm gonna click, come after y'all. Click the like notification. Hit that like notification. We need those clicks. We need the clicks. And make sure you get those uh, circumnavigation t-shirts. They're on Boom. sale. I'm sure Jordan will put the link right there. Wow, look at this guy. It's like he's done this before. A couple times. Amazing. All right, we're out. Oh, That's it. Um, so today we so we have like a five hour drive to Phoenix. Yeah, five hour drive to Phoenix, stay in Phoenix okay. for a day and then fly out Friday. 15 hours of flying to yeah. Sweden. We we'll stay the night in Stockholm. Yeah. The next day we take a flight to Gotland. Yeah. So it's quite a few, it's a few days. It's a three time. day. Three day. It's a three day adventure to get Yay, there. Yay, I just want to get there. I wish I could do it like this and just do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it. Okay. I huh? think it worked. Weird. <laughs> nope. I wish it was that easy, but it's not. And so we began a few days of traveling with our toddler in tow. But when we got to Sweden and reunited with Mormor, it was all worth it. Jag visste jag ingen engelska. Ja. Eller hur? Ing, äh, ingen engelska, bara svenska. Bara svenska. Okej. Okay. Ja. <laughs> wow. It's snowing. Sierra's first snow? What? Jag ser det snöar, jag ser det snöar. Det var väl roligt. Hurra! Då tar vi Santana på och skidorna fram. So we all get a fucking hey, this can go too! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's as tall as Sierra is. It's the first snow Sierra sees. It's really cool. She's loving it so far. <laughs> Sierra, get more and more. Get more and more. <laughs> Yeah, get him, Nugget, get him! Get him, Nugget, get him! 65 years of practicing. <laughs> <laughs> no, Kaza! Being out here in the frozen Swedish countryside was just what the doctor ordered for these weary travelers after spending so much time in the sweltering heat of the tropics. But I can never sit still for too long, so I started to tackle a project that we'd been thinking about for years. So we've decided to renovate this little house and make it livable, which I think will be quite cool. Obviously, it's pretty rough. It's a really old place. And it used to be used as like a baking sort of situation. Um, so this whole thing is an oven and it takes up, it's not a very big house, but it takes up most of the house. And so what I've been sort of focusing on is figuring out how we can remove this thing without destroying the whole house, which means I have to do it brick by brick, starting with the chimneys upstairs. And so I began one hell of a project. For a long time, Karen and I have talked about having a little place on land to balance out our time at sea. So this was the beginning of turning this little stone cottage into a heated, livable house where we can visit family and have a bit of space to ourselves. Yeah, it is just a massive, massive, massive amount of physical work. All in all, I ended up moving about 20 tons of stones, which is equal to the entire weight of Delos, all by hand. Perfect. Now you only have to do that 1,000 more times. And I found physical labor to be strangely satisfying. What a trip, huh? I know. Our bags are packed. We're ready to go. It Aww. feels crazy. Are you ready to have your quiet little no. countryside home back <laughs> no, to yourself? No, not at all. Home? I'm not ready at all. Aww. It was it's, such an amazing visit. Yeah, it's Thank been you for everything. so great. And Please come back soon. We will. And I will come to you. Woohoo! Woohoo! All right. Well, we have about three days of travel. Yeah. A little bit more. Then we'll be back.
Up next on Delos, we return to Mexico. Say hi, Delos. Oh, I missed you. Only to find out that our project list has actually gotten longer, and we struggle to get Delos ship shape before setting off south towards our Pacific Ocean crossing. trying to get this nut off for the record I did find the wrench that just fell down so Brian don't be blaming me when your 10 millimeters missing do it here no <laughs> <laughs> you know I can't lie to you sometimes boat do but it does make a difference to be doing the boat yard work with this wonderful t-shirt on and the guy started the sander just when I needed him not to Okay, let's go back to Mexico. <laughs> Idiots.